So it's August 12. I've had my 2023 Kawasaki KLR 650S for about seven weeks or so now, and I've got just under 2,000 miles already on the bike. That should tell you that I have really enjoyed riding it so far. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've gone out and I can't even tell you how many hundred plus mile rides on this bike. I think that's probably the thing that I like most about it so far is it does these long rides so comfortably and effortlessly. I've really enjoyed riding it so far. As I shared in a couple of other videos, I sold my 2021 Kawasaki KLX 300 and bought this bike because I went through a big life change. I moved from an isolated small village surrounded by gravel roads um, to a slightly larger town surrounded by smooth paved roads and went through a divorce, found myself with a lot more free time on my hands and just decided I need a, needed a bike that could do longer distance rides because I have so much more free time and a bike that was a bit better on the road than the KLX 300 was. And uh, I chose this one, of course, because it's just such a great value. Um, at the time I bought this, Kawasaki was offering $1,000 rebates on all the KLR 650s. So it was already a good price to begin with. And then you knock another $1,000 off and I just couldn't resist. So I'm really happy with the purchase so far. Um, just under 2,000 miles on it, like I said, and I figured I'd uh, do a quick review for you. So I've been riding uh, about 36 years. I started on motocross bikes for quite a few years. Then I think my first road bike was a 1984 Honda CB750. And that led to uh, buying and riding some sport bikes for a while. And then in the early 2000s, I bought my first dual sport, and that's pretty much all I've ridden ever since. So I've had all kinds of different dual sports over the last 20 plus years, but never a KLR. I always wanted one. Um, I never pulled the trigger on one until now, primarily because of the redesign and the fact that Kawasaki changed it to fuel injection. So it doesn't look a whole lot different than the previous um, carbureted model, but I like the new colors. Certainly this color is amazing. I love this gray color. I've averaged about 53 miles per gallon. I've seen as low as 51 miles per gallon on a tank of gas and as high as 57 miles per gallon on a tank of gas in my first 2000 miles. And uh, it's one of those bikes you just kind of short shift it through the five gears and it loves to cruise at 60, 65 miles per hour on these beautifully paved roads near where I live. I also have really enjoyed cruising gravel roads with it, 45, 50 miles per hour. I love the long wheelbase. It's got pretty good wind protection and uh, it loves those long 100 plus mile rides. It just eats those up. I really like the LED headlights. They're really bright and I feel like I'm a lot more noticeable by cars now that I have a bike um, with LED headlights. They're just so ultra bright. And I like the simple um, digital dash that they now have on this bike. There's a spot on there that clearly looks like it's for a gear indicator, but they didn't put a gear indicator in there, which I thought was kind of odd. I'm sure it's just a, a money saving thing, but I wish they would put a gear indicator on there. Um, there's no tachometer though. I don't really feel like you need a tack on this bike because you don't need to rev this bike out. It's all about the torque and you just short shift it. So I don't really miss the tachometer on this bike. So the Swiss army knife factor of this motorcycle is the thing that makes it so amazing. It can do so many different kinds of riding reasonably well. So off-road, it's, it's decent. Through the twisties on paved roads, it's quite good. Is it going to do any one of these things really, really well? No, it's a great Swiss army knife bike for doing all kinds of different kinds of riding reasonably well. And I find that at age 52, after 36 plus years of riding, I think that's probably my highest priority as someone who only wants to own and maintain one motorcycle. The Swiss Army Knife factor of the bike is probably the most important thing for me, especially when I have a limited budget. I'm sure there's bikes out there like the Yamaha Tenere 700 that probably have a higher Swiss Army Knife rating than this bike, but they just cost so much more money. Maybe someday I'll buy one of those 
when I feel like I can comfortably afford it. But for now, there's really no other bike out there for the money that has a Swiss Army knife rating like this one has. So are you going to take this on a track and do track days with it? No. And if you're going to do a lot of expressway riding, I don't think this is a very good bike for that. It's limited by the five speed transmission. And I think it's just going to be revving too high at expressway speeds. And I've even heard people talk about the, the bike using oil at expressway speeds. So I haven't even taken it on the expressway and I probably won't ever do that. I really just enjoy riding back roads and gravel roads with this bike. I really like the looks this Pearl Storm Gray color. I've gotten so many compliments. I love the fact that the rest of the bike is blacked out. The Caribou Cases top case that I bought for the bike, which cost me about $330, that's been really amazing. I can put so much stuff in there. It's been such a great thing to have a top case on a bike for the first time, take water with me, some tools, things like that with me on all of my rides. And I put my wallet and phone and everything in there and it's waterproof, weatherproof. Yeah, I've been very, very happy with this bike so far. But is it perfect? Of course not. It has its issues just like all motorcycles do. I know that Kawasaki made a big effort during the redesign to isolate the rider from the vibration that comes through from this big 650 single, but a certain amount of vibration still makes it through. You can feel that vibration in your feet, your hands, and your butt. And at the end of my 100, 120 plus mile rides, I do start to get numbness on occasion in my throttle hand. So that is probably the thing that I could see most people having an issue with, with even this new redesigned KLR650 is the amount of vibration that comes through. It's pretty substantial. For the most part, I don't mind it. I actually kind of like it. Um, I do not want a bike that is too ultra smooth and that isolates me too much from the motor. So for the most part, the, the vibes don't bother me too badly. If I do have one other issue, it's I guess this stock rear tire. I'm just at about 2000 miles and you can see it's pretty much toast at about 2000 miles. So that's kind of a disappointment. It's gonna require me to put a new rear tire on this bike here soon during my first uh, season with it. So that's a bit of a disappointment for me. But overall, this bike has been a real pleasure during the first 2000 miles of ownership for me. I highly recommend it for the money. It's a really great price for the, the amount of motorcycle that you're getting. It's not perfect. It definitely has its issues. You can resolve some of those issues by spending more money on something like a Yamaha Tenere 700. But if you don't have that kind of money and you want a bike that can do just about every kind of riding reasonably well, you can't really go wrong with this new redesigned 2023 Kawasaki KLR 650S.